Friday, excuse me. I just put my baby daughter to sleep. And so she wakes up during this broadcast as well. I want to share something very powerful on here. Worship is the routine for regaining your focus on Jesus, strengthening your focus on Jesus. Attentiveness is the routine for growth. Faith is the routine for energy, for strength. Discernment is the routine for safety. And discernment is the protector of your focus, discerning who, what, where could be a distraction to how you're flowing with God. Servanthood is how God sees your maturity. Servanthood means that you have conquered selfishness. Servanthood means that you have destroyed pride. Unselfishness is where you become a gift to others instead of expecting a gift from others. Whenever you're focused, you're the strongest. Whenever you're attentive, your soul is being purged. Attentiveness is the washer and the dryer of the soul. Well, let me not say the dryer because you're always supposed to be full of the water of God, which is the word of God, but it is the washer of the soul. There's a reason why Jesus said watch and pray because watching advances your reactions. See, if Peter was watching, he would not have cut off the man's ear because he would have been paying attention to Jesus and that wasn't a move that Jesus wanted. So watching creates accuracy with God. Watching destroys uh, your responses that are unnecessary. Watching increases your maturity. Watching gives you inspiration to submit yourself unto God. Watching births a ability in you to honor, to celebrate divine presence in your life. Watching destroys the temptation to go ahead of God. So watching creates patience and patience is the arms that grab your promise. Patience is the arms that grab your destiny. Your destiny is connected to your patience. Patience is the ability to yield. Faith is the ability to shield. Praying in the spirit is the ability to build. And willingness positions you in God's field. Your patience corrects your desire for revenge. Your patience birth forgiveness. Your patience strengthens you to please God even when you're in a place of long suffering. The Holy Spirit often gives you patience because it is not your assignment to cut off the Roman soldier's ear. It's not your assignment to call down fire from heaven. It is your assignment to walk in love. Patience quickens your mind back to soundness. Those of you all listening to my voice, if you just heed what I'm saying on here, uh, it is to develop a new creature in you, a new creation. Uh, patience is the permission for God to create his own strategy in your life. Patience is your willingness to adapt to God's sudden movements.
is sudden instructions. Favor is connected to how you responded to a war. Favor is connected to how you responded to opposition. An obstacle is a door to a miracle. Your focus is where God teaches you how to respond to adversity. When you become a student, you become prudent. God teaches who reaches. As you're joining on, say, Father, I received the prophet's reward, and I want you to share this broadcast. As you're joining on, God bless all of you all. God bless all of you all. I want you to share this broadcast on Facebook and say, Father, I received the prophet's reward for the gospel. Every time you're praying in the spirit, God is giving you his strength to hear and be still in the midst of a storm. Praying in the spirit gives you a revelation of how to walk in maturity. Praying in the spirit creates a longevity where you don't make quick moves just because of feelings or because of your own understanding, but you find yourself asking God for permission. Asking God for permission is submission. Asking God for permission destroys demotion. The purpose of order is for God to cancel out your rebellion. Order stops the judgment of God. This is why when Moses is in the presence of the children of Israel, God is having mercy on them. Order protects you from God's wrath. Order reveals to you the voice that is assigned to bless you, promote you, reward you. The purpose of order is to create favor in your life. In the realm of order, God tests to see how willing you're able to adapt to hearing his voice in a prophet. In one of his kings on the earth, the Bible said that Jesus is the king of kings. Also in the Bible, uh, Revelation chapter 1, it talked about the kings. He's the prince of the kings of the earth. So the purpose of order is to create your patience. Impatience is your hatred for divine authority. Impatience is your hatred for divine authority. Have you ever had an officer telling you to stop or hold up in a line and you started getting impatient? Impatience is your hatred for divine authority. Why did the children of Israel say, why did you bring us out here to die? Why did they say, uh, um, when are we going to get... Uh, meet when are we going to get what we want enter into the promised land because impatience is hatred for divine authority so they hated the authority of moses because of impatience impatience is an encouragement for you to disobey god impatience trains you how not to yield to your fear of god impatience creates the desire for you to refuse divine words. Struggle is forgetfulness of what you've been taught in the spirit. Weakness is the ability to despise divine knowledge. The things that God teach you. Sitting at Jesus' feet deletes wrong thoughts. When you become a divine Mary, you carry special mantles. If you refuse to be a Martha, God can become the author of your life. I want to talk to you real quickly, very powerful about this. Why is Moses and Elijah coming back to the earth? In Revelation chapter 11, the Bible reveals to us that in uh, Revelation chapter 11, 
I believe it's verse 3. It talks about Moses and Elijah coming back on the scene. Why are they coming back on the scene? One thing that I want you to catch about Moses and Elijah, that both of them walked in the earth as gods. A revelation gave the description of who God was sending, and it said that they are able to call down fire from heaven. They are able to smite the waters, and the waters are affected. It's given the revelation of Moses and Elijah. Why is Moses and Elijah talking to Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration? Their spirit is with Jesus. Think about it. Because who was Jesus talking to? He wasn't talking to their body. He was talking to their spirit. Of course, it was their glorified body, but he was talking to their spirit. Their spirit was with Jesus before he died, which shows you that the spirit of Moses and Elijah was with Jesus before he was crucified. I want you to hear me, saints, very clearly. When you go through hard seasons, the spirit of the saints of old encourage you. They edify you. They build you up. They strengthen you. In the spirit world, the Bible said that we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. So in the spirit world, before Jesus is going to the cross, Elijah and Moses are, are talking with him. The Bible said his face shone. He gets strengthened. Because when you're going through trials, this is where angelic activity is the heaviest. Always remember that when you're going through situations that maybe you would not understand according to the natural, you're understanding according to the spirit. But if you look at it according to the natural, why am I going through this? Those situations are often the introduction to heavy angelic ministry. Do not despise what God uses in your life to birth another level of the supernatural. Peter had to go to prison to have an encounter with an angel. Think about that. Think about that. Moses had to go 40 days without food to get an encounter with the glory cloud. Joseph had to have an encounter with Potiphar's wife lying on him for him to encounter favor with the king, Pharaoh. Esther had to encounter Haman to have an encounter with destroying God's enemy and preserving the people of God. Jesus had to have an encounter with people spitting on him and laughing at him and scorning him for you to have an encounter with your father that loves you. So oftentimes the trial is the creator of something good in someone else's life. This is why Jesus told you and gave you a command. Do not save your life. If you save your life, you'll lose it. But if you lose your life, you'll find it in me. Because Jesus was giving you the revelation that if you will make a decision not to protect yourself from the path that I've chosen for you, I'll cause the path to create all for somebody else. Your pain creates someone else's gain. Your pressure creates somebody else's pleasure because somebody can enjoy you because you went through things that was unenjoyable. And if that's not a word, I made it up, so just take it as is. Somebody can enjoy you because you went through things that you did not enjoy. Think about that. Jesus had to endure the cross for you to enjoy the blessing. Or let, uh, let me put in a wisdom door statement. Jesus had to endure the cross for you to enjoy the crown. Divine promotion was connected to Jesus's demotion at the cross. Have you ever thought that Jesus canceled demotion at the cross because he became sin? And in, in sin, God casted Adam out of the garden, which was a form of demotion. So Jesus became demotion so that you can become promotion. Why is God sending back Elijah and Moses? Because these are two prophets that walked as gods in the earth. Their spirit was recycled upon their successors. What does that mean? They had a man serving them that when they passed on from this life, their spirit remained with that man. 
and they lived their life through that man. Elisha lived the life of Elijah because Elijah prayed to die. So God decided in his wisdom, I'll send back your spirit in the body of Elisha. While Elijah is asking Elisha what he wants, God speaks to Elisha what to request. See, saints, I want you to hear me. When everyone is led by the spirit, the will of God is accomplished. Unification or unity births the will of God expedited. Unity births the will of God expedited. So now Elisha is requesting the right thing because Elijah is offering the right thing. And because Elijah prayed to die, God pits his spirit upon Elisha. When God spoke to Moses, say, you won't go to your promised land. God was speaking about Moses' body because Moses did get to his promised land through Joshua. Because the Bible said he laid hands on Joshua and the spirit of wisdom came upon Joshua. Joshua was carrying the impartation of Moses. So Moses did get to his promised land, but God had to destroy the body because that body was rebellious. I want you to see something about Moses that you probably didn't see. That Moses, he rebelled against God because he was in the presence of rebellion. Don't become the atmosphere you're in. That's a wisdom door. If you take a note, you can write that down. Don't become the atmosphere you're in. If you're in the atmosphere of slander, don't become a slanderer. If you're in the atmosphere of the weak, don't become weakness. If you're in the atmosphere of fear, don't become dreadful. Don't become nervous. Nervousness stops the flow of your David reaction to a Goliath. Nervousness, it cripples your ability to hear God in a moment. Nervousness is the empowerment to make inaccurate decisions. Nervousness is the bridge to failure. Nervousness is the cousin of anxiety. Nervousness is the cousin of anxiety. Nervousness is the feeling when someone is being judged. It may be you, it may be somebody around you. Nervousness is the revelation that something is going on that God doesn't want. Nervousness is a divine signal. Either you need to stop or someone needs to stop because there's judgment coming. Nervousness is how God communicates with your belly. Nervousness is where God speaks to your stomach area where your spirit is located. That's why when a woman is pregnant, the baby is located not at her head or her arm, but the baby is located at her stomach because your stomach is where your spirit is located. This is why when God was about to change Hannah's life, he makes sure he pits a baby named Samuel in her womb because now her belly is going to another level in the spirit. And he caused her new level, Samuel, because this is a prophetic realm where she's going to be accurate with God. That's why the Bible says that every time Samuel opened up his mouth, he never had his words fall to the ground because now Hannah was stepping into a realm of accuracy with the Lord. I'm Prophet Joshua Holmes. Receive this wisdom, share this broadcast. I love you in Jesus' mighty name.